DHS provides services to prevent homelessness and they provide temporary emergency housing to homeless New Yorkers. Here at the Atlantic Men's Facility, we protect the lives of all clients, workers, staff, property for the city of New York. We have to protect them, regardless of their status, their background. It's a tough job because not only do we police the facility to make sure that it's safe and make sure the outside, the outer perimeters are safe as well, we still have to be mindful that the clients have issues that need to be addressed. I love my job. I'm here to protect property and lives. It's a good feeling to be able to serve the community, you know, the less fortunate, as we would say, because we don't know the circumstances you in here. People come with all different circumstances into the shelter system. They look for guidance, and that's part of our job, irregardless of how tough it is. And it is a tough job. We do have to deal with a variety of individuals, some good, some bad, but that comes with the territory. That's something you have to be mentally prepared for. They need help, and you are willing to provide that help. A few years back, there was a time when the place was a little more hectic, and since DHS police stepped in, we cleared all that up. It's, it's not like how it used to be. I mean, people can come here, they feel more safe with us around. The community, I'm sure, feels more safe us standing in the corners. We're out here all day. Well, they're kind of unsung heroes. The public doesn't see the work that they do necessarily, but the fact that um, they provide safe uh, shelters for people to come in off the street uh, makes the quality of life in New York City better. This facility here is to assist families in need of emergencies. If they got burnt out, you have DV cases, or, you know, some people, you know, they just, you know, got evicted and nowhere to go. I love the policing with compassion because we definitely do it at a family facility. We're dealing with the father, we're dealing with the mother, and we have children involved. So we definitely have to have some sort of compassion because anyone can be in this situation. I'm just going to check around the trailer area, check the garbage contraband, see if what they're hiding underneath or throwing above the gate. Sometimes it's difficult because, you know, when people are angry, they push other people away from them. And so I have to break that first barrier. And all the officers here, that we have to break that first barrier to get them to trust us so we can help them. It feels good to come into work and to put on my uniform because I feel like I stand for something and that I make a difference when I come here. You know, we are human and we tell them, listen, we know you're out and down and we try to assist them as much as we can with their process. It takes a special type of individual who can balance their law enforcement function with their ability to provide services and provide a safe environment. No one likes to see other people uh, going through hardships in life and desperate need. So I just try to do my best in helping. We've worked together with uh, Local 237, uh, members of the union who helped us grow and become more professional. And we've done this by working, it's been teamwork, not only with the offices and DHS management, but also uh, members of Local 237. The union been supporting us as long as I had the job. I've been working here for like 12 years now, and the union always been around, you know. Um, I feel like the union, if it weren't for the union, we wouldn't have lasted this long. Local 237 has done a great deal of good things for us. I appreciate the benefits and so does my offices and staff. Once you come into this division, you're a family and you need to treat everyone as your brother and sister. Irregardless of rank, irregardless of background, they are your family.